Hello and welcome to another video. I think I need to start all these videos by saying it's been a long time since I did the last video. And it has been a hell of a long time. I actually even haven't checked how long ago the last one was. But um, here we go. I'm back again with another one, which I hope you'll find entertaining. Um, well, so what have we got this time? Well, this is another clock. I know I've made loads of clocks. But um, this one is basically the poor man's Nixie clock. Yes, it's a Banggood kit, um, but it's uh, a little bit different. There's quite, quite a lot to it. We'll go through all the bits in a minute. Um, but as you can see here, we have these little uh, acrylic, acrylic blocks with numbers on them. Um, and they are illuminated from underneath by LEDs. So they get diffused through the acrylic and the etched number will be the brightest spot. And there you go, that's what's gonna tell the time. And we have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sets of digits. Presumably that's zero. Uh, that's one. And uh, so on and so forth, right to the top. So that's what we're building here. Now, this is a block of all sorts of clever things. And I thought, oh, they pre-assembled this. Because as you can see, it's bolted together um, along along the, uh, the edge there. But no, nope, it isn't. You've got to undo all of that. That's just bolted together for packing purposes and posting. Uh, so all of that's uh, basically, you can look inside there, you can see we have got unpopulated PCB. So, yeah, lots of bits of acrylic there with the uh, protective film on them, which no doubt will need to be removed. Uh, what else have we got? We have got lots of things. We have got a round thing with bits. Um, don't know what that's for. Um, looks like there's a little daughter board there for something. Um, we have got. Let's open this up. Why can I never open these things? It's probably in the age. Um, oh, for God's sake, it's trying to do this through the camera at the same time. That's not going to work right. Here we go. Uh, we have got. I have no idea what this is. It looks like a a tube of foam, and I have absolutely no idea what that is for. I'm sure all will come clear in the end. There is actually an instruction leaflet, which usefully is all in Chinese. Hurrah! The only thing I can understand on there is LED. Um, so this is the instructions for, and the parts lifts for, I think, wherever this is. But we shall see. Um, lots, of, lots of surface mount components in this. So if you're not into surface mount, this may not be one for you. But as always, I will show you how I solder surface mount parts. What's this little thing? A little plastic container, as I say, with a daughter board in there. I can't quite see what it is through the camera. <laughs> it's all right, I can't see what it is without using the camera. Let's just open that up, shall we? Okay, so we've got a little connector and riser. And whatever this little board is. Oh, well that's got a little LCD display on it. Or um, an OLED, is that uh, an OLED display? That's what it looks like. Well, that could be fun. Um, so, uh, yeah, I've just lost the riser. Where's that gone, there it is. So that's obviously why it's in this little plastic box for shipping so that the screen doesn't get smashed which is well thought through 
Right, so that's interesting. We'll put that back in that bag there. Um, as I say, so we've got some... What's that there? I have no idea. Uh, we have got a switch. A fair bit of hardware. Connectors. Um, horribly, a horrible, nasty, squeaky, rough buzzer. Um, but at least it's got a proper connector on the end, so if it does sound foul, we can just unplug it. And it will sound foul, because they always do. Quite often with these kits, I just don't bother putting the buzzers in. Because they just annoy the living dude out of me. And let's have a look at this. This is a couple of acrylic sheets. And there's the PCB. Um, it's looking quite interesting. Now, I actually bought this kit a long time ago with every intention. So I'm sure in my last video I probably said, no, I've got loads of kits coming, da -de -da. and no, I haven't done them. So, uh, yeah, this is um, looking quite, not necessarily complicated, but um, quite busy. And there's another board there. Or is this one belonging to these instructions? Yeah, it's this one. Um, and that's got a couple of uh, batteries in it, CR2032 cells, presumably for preserving the, the time when it's um, unplugged. We've got an LED there, we've got a bunch of LEDs in there. Um, I think this thing's going to light up like a Christmas tree because every time I look at a the packet, there are loads of LEDs. What is that for? Answers on the postcard. Right, okay, so um, the last packet, and I can see Surface Man LED Hell has come on a roll. And here they are. There we go. Many an LED. Looks like multicolored LEDs, which would be nice, but there's loads of them. Look at that. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to need to do is uh, take this apart in a minute and we'll have a look at uh, what the PCB is like. Uh, looks like I've got another battery mount there. How many batteries does this thing have? Oh, and a buzzer. Another buzzer. Photoelectric cell. I don't know what's inside there. I sus Is that going to be a crystal? Inside there? We'll have a look. A little bit later. What are those capacitors or... Surface mount resistors or something, what are they? Oh, again, my eyesight. Oh no, they're, um, oh, I forget. Like voltage regulators or something, it's probably too tiny for that. Uh, there we go, a surface mount electrolytic and USB mini, mini USB port. It tends to be typical with all of these kits. Mini USB. It'd be nice if they started moving over to USB C actually. What do we got here? We have got. Is that another buzzer? That's a, oh, that's a microphone. That looks like a microphone to me. So perhaps it um, responds to music, flashes, flashes lights in response to music. There's our mini USB power supply, and the rest is just a bunch of hardware. It's all nice. It's all nice stuff, you know, solid metal. And interestingly enough, as you can see on here, actually, um, you're going to need an Allen key for these um, for these guys which is unusual. It's normally just a good old fashioned crosshead screw, but no, this is Allen keys. I don't know if it's got an Allen key supply, does it? Not a problem, I have Allen keys, but if you don't, it's gonna be a bit of a pain. Um, and there we go, so that's kind of the kit. Shall we, um, shall we get this apart? Is that, oh my word. They've really tightened that down, probably unnecessarily. Um, so I shall get completely the wrong tool now. 
Let's see if we can just loosen them off. And we'll have a look at what's... Oh my word, that is tight. That seems unnecessarily tight to me. Right, what do I know? No, I'll <coughs> probably keep, keep these uh, nuts and bolts because they're probably going to be needed. Well, I say probably going to be needed. It might just be for shipping. I don't know. Right, let's uh, take these off. There's three of them holding it all together. That was a bit tight. Yeah, this kit was actually quite expensive. Um, well, certainly for me. Um, it cost about £40, which I don't know what the exchange rate is. Is I don't know, $50, something like that. I wouldn't normally spend that much on a Banggood kit. Um, in fact, I get lots of kits for that sort of money. Um, but I just like the look of this one. Uh, there seem to be a lot to it. Uh, there are instructions that come with it. I know I've shown you this thing, but this is not the only instructions you get. If you go onto the Angered listing for this kit, there is a link to a PDF which provides all the instructions. I'm sure in a very detailed manner. I say I'm sure because I haven't actually looked at it in any any uh, any length, but I will open that up and I'll show it to you so uh, we can go through it together. So let's see what we got here. We have got a plain piece of acrylic, uh, part of the mounting I'm sure is going to be for the digits. That looks like that is going to, I don't know, will that house LEDs? No, because most of the LEDs are a different shape to that. Uh, I don't know what that's going to be for. PCB, let's have a look at that in a second, get an idea. And again, more acrylic parts, which will form the case. And uh, so let's keep all of those in order as they came out. That's them, so let's have a quick look at the PCB. So, and uh, so there we go, we've got a battery holder there. Is that, is that three or four batteries? That seems an awful lot. Um, so it's all surface mount here, some LEDs there, some resistors, chip, that'll be a capacitor, and I'm not sure where that might be a location for a door for the one of the daughter boards. I'm not sure, can't remember. And a bunch of resistors, another chip there. So you can see we're we're dealing with some relatively tiny um, connections here. So lots of opportunity for screw up here. And bang, there we go. These will be illuminating each segment each one of these as they sit on top of it like that so uh, one two three four five six groups and um, yeah these will be built on top of these and the LEDs will shine through these acrylic slabs to illuminate each of the uh, digits. That's basically how it's going to work, I believe. So there we have it. And now I'm wondering if these here will be touch sensitive controls. I've got a feeling they will be. Um, there we go. Nicely made, lots of tracks. Um, as I say, the biggest biggest issue with this is going to be fitting certainly that this this chip, this surface mount chip, that'll be fairly okay. But this one, yeah, that's gonna be one to really be careful with. So a nice bit of flux is gonna be needed for that. Make sure the solder is flowed in the right direction and there's no bridges, but Crack an opportunity for screw up there. 
but I think the rest of it um, is going to be relatively straightforward. Um, that looks like it's pretty much all through hole components, so that'll be easy. And um, I think the same with that one as well. That's all through hole. So yeah, but uh, we can now see where that nice strip of LEDs is going to go. And it's going to go all over here. So that's the kit um, and all the components. What I'll do is I shall set myself up in a suitable manner uh, with the instructions, um, which I will show you. And uh, we can start putting this, um, this thing together. Right, okie dokie. I have a pile of LEDs, which I've just taken out of the strip. So let's push those away for a minute. And we will start populating this board. Now, if we remember, now I've got a pair of tweezers. These are ceramic tipped. They don't have to, just any old pair of tweezers will do, but um, I'm looking at this through the camera, which is always a pain. So what we want to do is, let's see if I can focus this any better without shaking the camera. No, nope, that's as good as it gets. So hopefully you can see that okay. I have got a magnifying glass underneath it as well. I just wonder if I position it like that might be a bit better, okay. So <clears throat> what we want to do is first of all, put a blob of solder. Let's get this a bit more central. Put a blob of solder on the oval pad as we did, talked about before and then position the chip on it. Um, let's do that. Uh, I'm using a fairly fine tipped uh, soldering iron. So uh, we just want to uh, go like that. That should be enough. And then, swapping over, now I'm left-handed, or cack-handed, depending on what you uh, call it. So, so I'm not going to do all of these through the uh, camera, I'm just going to do this one just to show you how, how it goes. And then we just reheat that pad off of the chip up, I see that's too far over. There we go. So that first pad will hold the chip in place. Um, am I going to be able to... There you go. Uh, and you can see the contacts on each pin of the LED match up with the position of the pad on both sides <clears throat> and that's the solder we just did on that one there so in order to do the rest of them and again I'm trying to do this through the camera I won't do this with the rest of them because it's just almost impossibly fiddly doing it like this um, <clears throat> bit of heat. You've got no depth perception looking through a camera like this. Let's try. Yeah, that's better. Bit of heat. Bit of solder. Like that. Boop. And it flows really easily into the into the con con uh, connections. I have got that on the right way, haven't I? Yeah, I have. Yeah, so there you go. There's the notch. Be stupid, and the first LED I put in, I've got it the wrong way around, but fortunately, I haven't. 
And uh, ooh, the sun's coming out and it's now blinding me so I can't see a damn thing. Well, that's that's useful, isn't it? Let's, let's start it this way. That one. That one. And that one. Don't leave the iron on the LED for too long because you can knacker them doing that. But you can see there that each LED, or sorry, each pin is neatly soldered to its respective pad. And I think the true is the same for that one. And uh, there we go. That's the first one. 10,000 more to do. God help me. So that's how we solder each LED. So I'm going to finish all of those off. And once I've done that, I shall come back to you. Just a matter of interest, what I tend to do when you've got lots and lots of the same thing to do, as you have with all of these LEDs, is what I've done is I've gone through the entire board and I've just put a blob of solder on all of the initial um, the oval shaped pads and then I'll do a row of LEDs, attach a row of LEDs as you can see here and then just sold them up. And so you get you get a bit of a production line going that way. So that's what I'm gonna do with all of these. I, I just think it speeds it up a little bit. Um, so you can spend a bit more time making sure you get the LEDs nicely laid out and as square as you possibly can. And you can see there's plenty of overlap on the pads. So you, you've got plenty of uh, room for solder to flow in to the uh, connectors on each of the LEDs. So that's that's how I go about doing that. Right, so we have all of the LEDs are now populated. I've also cleaned the board off afterwards with isopropyl alcohol. Um, just, scrap, uh, just rubbed it down with an old uh, toothbrush. It just gets any bits of flux off. I also inspected every single joint using one of these. This is a jeweler's loop. That's 10 times that one. These are dirt cheap. Get these off of uh, Amazon for next to no money at all. Um, and uh, hand on my heart, I think all of them are okay. So um, I need to uh, look at next. I think we're doing these guys here. Um, and I can't remember what, yeah, they were, they're described as triodes. I should know what these things are, tiny little things, but, um, let me, let me get those and, um, we'll start populating the board. Right, okay, so these are the guys that we need to look at next, or what they describe as a triode, can I... Focusing on them at all, just about. And they populate Q1 to Q6. Q to me is an inductor. Is that what they are? Are they inductors? I have no idea. Right, pointy stick time. So Q1 to Q6, so if we take our board, we can see that we are, I'll turn it the other way up, looking at these locations q1 q2 q3 all the way up to q6 and these are marked with the letters and numbers 2t1 this is where one of these comes in handy i wonder can i uh, can i actually use this glass to show you hmm. I'll bring the light in. I don't know if you can see that or not. Perhaps the light would be better if I bring this in. Uh, no, I don't think that's going to work. Anyway, oh, you might be able to see that. T2, so sorry, 2T1. So those are the guys that we need here. And... Uh, what I'll do, as I did with the LEDs, I'll show you how I populate one of them. 
incidentally, um, all of those LEDs, we had four left. So you've got four spares. And as I say, we need six of these. And we have, how many have we got here? One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. I think that's eight. Um, whether there are two others are needly elsewhere, I don't know. Anyway, so um, let's populate those. Oh, this is going to be interesting to see if I can um, work around the camera as I sold this one in. Okay, so that's that's our location. In this case, Q1. And here is our component. Okay. And uh, I think, you know, this, um, this board has actually warped a little bit with all the heat from... Uh, the soldering of those LEDs. So anyway, that's our component. So I'm going to put that just there. And to solder this one up, I'm going to... Excuse me for a second. Get myself sorted. So I'm trying to not stop knocking everything everywhere. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, first of all, just put a small blob of solder on that pad. Okay, and now I'm going to take our component to offer it up. Oops. Be careful not to uh, melt the plastic around these LEDs. This is... There we go. Press down on it and reheat just to make sure it's flat. And there we go. Now, what I need to do is... It's not particularly straight, is it? But I can live with it. It's so tiny. Who's ever going to see it? Uh, okay, again, I'm trying to do this through the camera and it is not very easy. Oh dear. I don't think I did a very good job of that. Let's try that again. I'm just finding this very difficult to do through the camera. Oh dear. I'm probably going to be wrecking this component now. can't do this through the camera so let me let me move you guys out of the way and I'll come back right okay so uh, that's that one soldered on didn't do a great job of that one but it's there a little bit concerned I might put too much heat on it and could have damaged it I don't know so if there's any problem with uh, this bank of LEDs here I might want to suspect that but you got the idea so he's going to put a blob of solder on that pad offer the component up to it using tweezers and then blob blob and there we go so I shall do the rest of those right so we've got all the um, two oh no I haven't soldered those up yet I've been a bit Bit ahead of myself I've got to do those but um i just looked them up and they are transistors pnp transistors um now the next thing to do is to populate once i've soldered the transistors in of course 
is to populate these resistors here and again one one that goes alongside each of those transistors getting out a shot here it's amazing how big this board is but there you go at the top r1 oh sorry r34 to r38 um which it says oh it's not it's r39 okay so here are the resistors in question the size of little grains of rice and these ones have got the number 472 i don't know if that's 4.7k or 47.2k or what i suppose i could get my multimeter out and measure them um but any rate um there that's the next thing to do and again surface mount components you just uh, put a blob of solder on one end, bring your component, in this case a resistor, up to it and solder, and then solder the other side. So let me do that and also complete soldering those transistors. Right, okay, um, a bit of a update where we are. So we've got all the uh, LEDs on, resistors times 5 or 6, whatever it is. Six and likewise for those tiny little transistors. The next bit is the bit I've been bit I've been dreading, the bit where everything could go seriously wrong, and that is the MCU, um, as they call it, which is in here. I thought this was a crystal originally, but it's not. It is um, a tiny little processor. So let's uh, there it is. Um, with many a pin on it, stuck to masking tape. I really want to handle it because I don't know how sensitive it is to static, but there we go. That's the uh, little processor, STC. It seems to be the manufacturer of choice for these kits. Um... So let's uh, pull that out and think about carefully how we're going to do this. Now, let me uh, zoom you in a little bit. Now, as far as orientation is concerned, you can see there's a dot on the chip and there's a dot on the uh, board. And quite simply, the dot and the chip go together and the chip is installed like that. So the first thing to do is to select a pad, probably that one there, to put a blob of solder on and then use that pad to position the chip. Um, And then, using a bit of solder uh, and paste, rather, some flux paste I have, let's see if we can't get this neatly and accurately soldered to the board. Sorry, I'm, I'm drivelling now because I'm thinking at the same time. So, OK, let's... Um, Let's start off by uh, pushing that out of the way, powering up my soldering iron, getting a little bit of solder, repositioning everything, including the camera, because I'm going to be doing this through the uh, camera again, which I don't like doing. Let's move the chip out of the way. Okay. Right, there it is. So if I can zoom in a little bit for you. That's about as far as I'll zoom. And uh, let's clean off the soldering iron. Incidentally, for cleaning the soldering iron, which I do a lot, I use um, one of these things. It's uh, just a funny shaped box with a load of 
coppery wire wool in there and you just dab your soldering iron it and it cleans it off neatly. Nothing new about it, been around for donkey's years, but if you wonder what I use, that's what I use. Okay, so let's start off. Uh, I'm seeing if we can just get a little bit of solder. All right, that's not working. Let's see if we can't try that again. There is actually solder on the pad itself. I'm going to be very careful here because I don't know what damage I'm causing. I think what I'd be better off doing, I think I need a bit of flux here. Let's inspect the board, see what I've done. Yeah, a little bit of uh, flux might be in order. Probably a bit too much now. This is not going great. I probably need to get a little bit of solder wick. Clean that up now. I'm making a bit of a hash of this. So it doesn't help much. But on the other hand, I think what I will do is just put some flux. On all of the pads. Come on. And then flow some solder onto it. But I'm kind of of the view that I'd be better off Getting one pin down first, and then doing the others. So you're seeing this disaster unfold in real time. No point in editing this out. I'm trying to pretend everything goes smoothly because everything does not go smoothly. It never does. So let's try and position the chip first of all. I'm going to have to uh, do this by my side, I think, get my eyes right down to it. Sorry, this is a bit boring. Right, I think that is not quite 
It's not quite there yet. Ah. No. I think that is pretty good. So I'm going to take the risk of applying some heat right there, like that, very briefly, in the hope that has soldered into position. And I can then manipulate the chip a little bit, like that, in the hope. And start flying with a solder across it. Oops. This may not be the best way of doing it. We will just need to see. That's where this little thing, or big thing, under that camera comes in useful because I can then examine. Yeah. I'm not sure how close those pins are. I'm just going to have a look at it using the eye loop and to see whether I've got those pins lined up in the way that they need to be, so bear with me. Well, major cock-up time. Now, you were probably screaming at me um, just before this bit um, because I had the chip the wrong way round. After having pointed out where the dot goes, I think I had it over here or over there or something and I was soldering it down. So I had to use a hot air gun to get it back off the board. Screwed up some of the pins, bent them all along the way. So I spent some time uh, gently pushing them back into position, which I shall probably have to do again um, along this side. But, uh, idiot. Too late, too tired, shouldn't be doing it. There you go, there you go, live and learn. Um... I just tend to learn the hard way. So what I've done is I've, I've stuck it down with a bit of Captain tape. I have actually put, applied a little bit of heat to that pin there, the end pin there. Hopefully it's tacked into position. So what I'm going to do now is uh, give it a little bit more flux. If I can squeeze this stuff out, I'm trying to do it very gently because the amount of flux it can just shoot out otherwise. There we go. That'll do. Uh, and hopefully just a little bit of heat will mean I can solder these without too much trouble. Never know how much solder. The, these tiny surface mounts I just, you know, they, there's a real skill, there's an art to these. And it's not a skill and an art that I've got. I've gotten away with it many times. Whether I shall get away with it this time or not, we shall see. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the uh, the loop out again and just check those connections. Right, so that's all the resistors in. Um, so 
all the 121s, which are the uh, 120 ohms, all around the chip, the main chip around there. And these two are um, one mega ohm, so they're numbered uh, 105. Okay, so that's that. The next job is we've got to use another LED. Um, so we had four left over from the main batch of LEDs that we fitted on that side of the board. So I'm going to grab one of those and uh, fit that in. <coughs> um, and of course this one is going to be the same principle as the others. You've got the oval pad there, which will be matched up with the cutout portion of the LED casing. So it will go in like that, um, with the cutout there. So we've already seen one of those being done. The rest of these are also surface mount. Um, capacitors there, there's another chip to go in, more resistors, there's another LED to go in, um, another transistor. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and fit all of those in because the principle is exactly the same in terms of how you solder them, but we'll also confirm the orientation when I've got them all in as well. So I'm going to finish off populating this side of the board. And uh, when I've done that, I'll come back to you and I'll show you what I've done. Right, OK, so here we are. Um, I've put in that capacitor there, which I forgot. So completed the board now. Um, that is the microphone. I guess it reacts to music or something. I don't know. But um, you just solder that riser on there and that's the orientation. Just clip the pins at the end after you've soldered them. Um, another transistor there, little capacitor there. Orientation of these two capacitors, as you can see, the black mark indicates negative, and that is uh, basically the same side as the white half moon on the uh, silk screen printing. But that's the position of those. Micro USB. It's got five pins, but you only need the two outer ones because all it's going to do is supply power. And they actually tell you to clip off the three pins between the two outer ones. I'm not bothered doing that because they don't connect to anything. That's just for data, uh, which this um, this clock doesn't need. Um, that chips in, a few resistors, LED, another transistor. I just put some tape over the buzzer because it's annoying. Um, and um, the uh, the battery holder, and uh, again, recognize the orientation of the battery holder here. Um, the plus symbol goes to the to the left like that. So that's basically it. Now the next thing to do is to put the battery in according to the instructions, and then power it up because there's a test you have to do. Now according to the let me see if I can get it here. According to the manual, um, where are we? Yeah, so what they want you to do is to run a test. And the idea is, is that these four LEDs um, should display red, green and blue. And it's a test. Now, the test instructions are on the main page of the, the listing on Banggood. And you can see there's a bunch of instructions in here. Um, I haven't been through all of them, but number 15 is the one that they tell you to, to look at. And the idea is you test the quality of the LED. So you can see there, press the switch key triangular icon, which is that one there. And those are touch buttons um, to switch the test color a total of three colors of red green and blue are tested press the set ski uh, ski key that one to exit the test so let's have a go at that um, so basically you want it that way around so 
So let's see if the thing powers on. And we have a beep. And we have LEDs. Uh, now, the actual... Let's press the... Yeah, I'm pressing the... I'm pressing the triangle, but it doesn't seem to be particularly that particularly lighting up the uh, the LEDs that they mention. Let's go back to the instructions. Uh, the LEDs that they're actually expecting to test here are uh, that one and that one and that one and that one but they're not lighting up at all there's other stuff going on here so there is life there but that test doesn't seem to be doing anything so unplug it again mind you've got the battery in now so if i take the battery out because i'm not entirely sure why the battery needs to be in because that's just saving the the time or the settings but they do tell you to put it in to be fair so let me uh, plug this back in uh, press the triangle uh, that's green yeah well, it doesn't seem to be particularly lighting up those four LEDs all right, let's try and put the battery back in. So I don't know if we've got a problem here or not, but as I say, there seems to be life in it. I'm pressing a triangle, but it doesn't seem to play that game. Well, there we go. We can see life on it at any rate. We've got... I presume that's counting seconds. So that seems to be working, whatever it is. Looking at it, I mean, the, the LEDs look probably look fairly bright on the camera. I'm not sure. They're not bad, but I suspect they're probably just bright enough to illuminate the etching on the, uh, on the um, uh, Perspex numbers which basically acts as a light pipe. But, uh, yeah, there are RGB, so there's three LEDs, red, green, blue, in each LED block. So there's probably lots of setting options, and we saw very briefly on the instructions there, there seem to be loads of uh, settings, probably more than uh, is healthy, to be honest. There's also a couple of LEDs on the, black that seem to, on the back that seem to illuminate when you press the keys. But uh, I don't know what I'm doing at the moment, obviously, because uh, I'm just randomly pressing the buttons. I can't seem to get that test mode. That's interesting. I've got two green. I wonder if I'm into a setting mode there. Yeah, I think I'm into a setting mode of some sort there. But OK, let's, um, let's pass on that and start finish the build of the actual case. Now I did say at the start of this, um, this video that there were a bunch of other components that looked a bit odd, like these for example. This I think is a different kit, so forget all of that. I'm not sure what this one is. Um, it's probably one I ordered. This is the one with what looks like an OLED screen now. I have no idea what it is. Uh, it might be one I've ordered ages ago and I've stuck it in the same bag for some reason. And uh, the same for whatever that is. Um, but there you go, we'll worry about that another time. So let's, um, let's get all the components out that we need for the build of the case and uh, let's see if we can complete this build. Right, so for the next part of the build, we need these... Uh, items. I've taken the uh, protective wrapper off these acrylic plates and um, we need eight bolts and eight, nu eight nuts. 
So I'm going to go through the instructions on on this, and I'll show you how it looks afterwards. But this is the uh, requirements for the next stage. Well, that's the first stage done. So you've got three clear acrylic plates and two um, black ones. And you can see the thicker of the two black ones. Uh, well, and it's not two black ones, is it? Because that the black, the other black one's the actual board. One thick black one at the top. Um, and you can see it has got all the clearances for the taller components and, uh, of course, a microphone and a cutout for the uh, mini USB. So that's the first stage using the eight bolts. And I've only just um, put these hand tight. So that leaves us with these plates, which are going to uh, basically hold the light pipes, these guys. So the instructions are pretty clear actually. So what I think I'll do is I'll just go ahead and put it all together. As I say, the instructions are very clear. It's got photographs, pictures showing you exactly how to do it. So I don't think I need to do that here when you actually get to it yourself. Um, it, it's it's pretty uh, pretty straightforward. So let's finish building this. And if there's any issues that I discover along the way, then um, we'll talk about that afterwards. So uh, let's get this thing completed. Well, I thought I'd just quickly show the build process at this stage. Um, as you can see, you've got these metal pillars, um, which screw into the uh, bolts that we put in earlier. And it's just a case of slotting in each of the, um, the light pipes. So each pack of light pipes represents a number. That's a seven there. What's that one? A six, possibly a nine, I don't know. And so on and so forth. And you're going from zero to nine on each, each slot, making sure that this plate, this bottom plate here, with all the holes in it, make sure that those holes line up with an LED like that. So you, you, if, if you block, if you put the plate on the wrong way round, you'll block the LEDs, which is obviously no good. Um, this top plate, the black one, is temporarily there um, with a screw at each corner just to get the, um, uh, the light pipes in. And then once you've got all the light pipes in, you're supposed to remove that because you've got another final acrylic plate which will go on top uh, like that. The removal of the plastic from each of these numbers is a right pain in the backside. Um, and the other thing to do is that when, let's get the next number, I think the next number I need is one. So that will be the next one. And you can see that the cutting of the plastic means that you've got to take, strip it out of the, the number, because obviously the plastic was on it when they etched the number on. So yeah, that's going to take a bit of time. And after you've taken each number out and removed the cover, give it a bit of a wipe with a microfiber cleaning cloth or something, just get any dust particles off of it. Because once it's in there, it's you don't really want to be fiddling about trying to get them back out again to clean them. So that's what's going to happen next. I'll um, populate all of these, get the uh, acrylic top on, and then after that we'll power it up for the first time to see what it looks like. Right, well, it's all together. Um, I have to say, putting, it, um, putting all those uh, acrylic numbers in there was um, a bit messy because this top piece flexes and if it flexes up, then all of these pieces become disengaged and it's a nightmare. So uh, be, be mindful of that. Just keep pressure on the top of it as you're unscrewing it and screwing it down and uh, you should be okay. So it's all together. Um, so the trick is, let's see, um, let's see how it looks when it's plugged in. So uh, let's get my power supply. And there we go. Ah, wow. So the first observation is if it's got too much light shining on it, those numbers are not readable, barely readable. So let me switch the lights off. 
I've got a little bit of daylight left still, but um, there we go, that's better. But yeah, that's that's not very good. It's all right when the numbers are towards the front of the unit, but the numbers at the back, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine onwards, I guess. Um, yeah, they're not so good. Let's let's have a look at that end one where it's going through the seconds. Um, yes, you can see as it comes up to the front, it's um, a lot more visible because obviously the numbers right at the back have got to shine through all the other uh, number plates. So I don't think this is going to be brilliantly readable if you've got a lot of daylight shining on it. And in order to be able to see it and really read it properly, you're going to have to be at eye level. Because if it's, you know, like that, then you, and you've got a number at the back, you can see the three, four, five, six to the right there. It's, it, yeah, now you can't read what those numbers are at all. He's uh, it, just got all that depth there, so the number at the back is just, you know, that much more difficult to read. So in terms of um, setting it up and all the different features, I'm not going to go through that. Um, you can have a look at that on the instructions. Um, so it was a nice kit. It's quite expensive, as so I think I paid about £40 for it, although it has come down in price, I think, on Banggood since I bought it. Um, but, uh, it, yeah, if you, like, if you like soldering LEDs, it's great. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, this is going to have to be up at... Uh, eye level to read it and I think those LEDs are not really bright enough um, or they need to find a way of making these uh, perspex lenses thinner having said that you know you, the, those um, LEDs are quite large um, these here so you're not going to be able to get them in a you know get them on the board possibly close enough together even if you did thin down those plates. But um, it's a nice kit. It's a bit different. Um, it looks a lot brighter on video, on the camera, than it does in uh, uh, <coughs> uh, real life, unfortunately. So, yeah. It might have a brightness setting on it, but I'm looking at those LEDs. I don't think they're going to get much brighter than that. Um, so, uh, yeah. Let's have a look down there. You can see those LEDs are pretty bright, but they get diffused so much um, that they, uh, yeah, they lose the um, their luminescence or whatever through the uh, light pipes. So there we have it. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that one. That's another kit. Um, I hope it won't be quite as long as it was last time <clears throat> before I do another one, but I just do these as and when. Um, but that's a bit different, that kit. And um, we, will, uh, we will leave it at that. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll catch you again. Cheers for now.